Okay, finally, Nightwish released a brand new album, Yesterwind, just a few hours ago for me. So we're going to check this album out. Honestly, I cannot wait. So before I start, pop your favourite songs down below in the comments below. It's not an album review per se. You'll see the album review on Discovery next week. We're just going to check out the album and also I'm going to give you my lyrical analysis as well. I'll be uh, reading the lyrics along with the songs. My computer's down there, but that's all right. That's all right. Let's continue. Let's get on with the first track, Yesterwind. No, noise cancellations. Turn the fucker up. Right up. Full blast, Jamie. Full blast. darkness and into the bright light. Beautiful. Got my coffee. Cheers everyone. Got my morning vape. Interesting way to start off the album. Ooh. Production's really good. Those some orchestral elements are just standing within the mix. Beautiful, balanced, equalizing very well. Lovely lyrics. Hear that flute in the background. Really a telling a story, what is ahead. Very good. So um overall this song was pretty good. Um nothing much I can say is that um reading the lyrics, the song captures themes of longing connection amidst isolation and loss. The imagery of a broken bloom buff and countless sunsets of a lost world evokes deep melancholy, full of melancholy. And see me, see me highlights a desperate need for recognition and understanding. The metaphor being on uh, on an island of a shipless cruise illustrates feelings of uh, abandonment while hinting at the possibility of companionship. Now that is very interesting. It's a poignant reflection on shared struggles and the human experience blending darkness with a glimmer of hope. That's what I think Yesterwind is, the first song off the album. So let's continue with An Ocean of Strange Islands. I did react to this. We're just going to chill out and listen to it. Such a great fucking song. Mmm. This coffee is beautiful. As you can see, I've just woken up.
Well done, this hits hard. Easter egg on this, sounding very similar to songs like in Imaginarium. I can hear it, I can definitely hear it. Like songs like Scare Tale. So good. Come before the storm. Oh. Gets me that witch laugh. <laughs> that riff. Woo. Oh, god damn, I can't believe there's another Nightwish album. Yes, the one. Whoa. I actually ordered the album as well, so it's coming next week. Holy heck. Such a beautiful song lyrically as well. Like a lot of people, I know a lot of people can interpret uh, different meanings of the lyrics and everything, but it's such a beautiful song.
her vocals are great on this. Oh, and that switch. Oh. Mm. I love this section coming up. Love it. The bagpipes. The Yulian pipes or something like that. So good. The musical compositions on this are brilliant already. I don't know why I said it was simple songwriting by them in my reaction, because I went back and checked my reaction. It's sophisticated songwriting, that's for sure. So much emotion on this already. It's like Nightwish's inner struggles. Beautiful. They gotta be the best symphonic metal band out there, don't they, Nightwish? That's in my opinion. Okay, I don't know what can actually beat this song, to be honest, but we're gonna check out song number three, the Ag Antikythera Mechanism. Interesting, let's continue. Woo. I like it. Ooh, those guitars are chunky. Marco singing. Got an eerie dark melody to it. I like it.
those drums, man! Now Floor comes in with Marco. Ooh, beautiful. Why was I getting a now Naprak vibes for a moment? Anyway. That's an industrialized feel as well. Soprano vocals by Floor, so damn good. That was a cool instrumental section. Heavy. Some nice guitar lead. So that was an awesome song. It had some very eerie melodies, the awesome symphonic orchestral elements just highlights. The production just highlights all those orchestral elements. Floor's vocals are absolutely fantastic. I just love the instrumental part. The middle section which became so damn fucking heavy. The drumming was all over the place with those awesome drum fills. And not to mention that industrialize the industrialized effect throughout the song as well. It's like an industrial symphonic metal song. That was awesome. But yeah, ah, yeah. So I'm reading the lyrics and the, the song reflects on the journey of humanity exploring themes of reconciliation, exploration, and the pursuit of truth. It emphasizes the interconnectedness of history, in my opinion, mystery in the afterlife, urging you to navigate the complexities of existence and celebrate human fucking achievements. 60 times to the sun is a great lyric and reference to both ancient and modern modern milestones highlighting humanity's resilience and ambition from early ancestors to space to space exploration ultimately conveys a hopeful message about transcending darkness and reaching for the stars embodying the spirit of exploration and the potential for a brighter future 
That's something we all need to take note, fellas. The way the world's going, the way the world's going, we're going to be ending up six feet under soon. We might hear, we might see a World War Three soon. The way things are going. But Nightwish are shining lights on what the future holds for us. Hmm. Okay, so next up, we're going to check out the day of. I don't think I've heard this, actually. Maybe I have. I'm not too sure. I think this was part of the, one of the singles. Ooh. Okay. I don't think I've heard this. I've heard Perfect with the Timeless and the Ocean Strange Islands. I haven't heard it then. Conveys impending doom this. Okay. Builds up. Love the lyrics, sir. Classical vibes. Oh, now we're building up. Love the crescendo. Not heard this song. This was a single as well. Interesting. This song will have to grow on me. I'm not really feeling this song.
I mean, it's alright. It's very slow in pace. I do love the building crescendo. But yeah, this is the weakest song off the fucking album at the moment. If you don't like it, stick a breadstick up your ass. Because this is the weakest song off the album. So I like the choir in the background. The choir background was pretty good. But it, at times it just sounded just slightly a little bit cheesy. Well, that's my opinion. At first listen, sounded a bit cheesy. It was melodic and her vocals were very good. But the song didn't go anywhere. There was really no substance to the song, to be honest. And, but I really enjoyed the lyrics so I feel like the the song conveys a sense of impending doom, societal collapse using vivid imagery and themes of fear, paranoia, and ex existential dread. It happens with urgent warnings about cataclysmic events of rising chaos, evoking a world on the brink of destruction, completely opposite of um, Antikihara mechanism, like completely opposite. It was more positive. Reference to historical modern fears such as AI and environmental disasters highlight humanity's vulnerability, not to mention the war. The repeated calls to obey and cover up suggest a, um, like a society paralyzed by fear and control, while the mention of ill-starred kids and empty sermons reflect the loss of innocence and purpose. The imagery of crops burning, uh, the new strain of fear driving people back into hiding emphasizes the bleakness of the current state. We're talking about probably COVID here. Portraying a world consumed by horror and anxiety such as like fake news as well the media the scaremongering fucking people it concludes with a stark reminder that the end is rooted in fear itself urging reflection on the consequences of living in a state of constant dread those lyrics are so damn true it's a shame the song didn't resonate to me musically but let's move on to the perfume of the timeless okay i've already heard this song it's a great fucking song. Completely different to the day of as well, you know. Like, no, we should go into the positive era and then the negative side of mankind here. Exploring the nature of mankind, like they always do in their albums. I haven't heard this for a while though. Still hits. Remember when this song first dropped back in um, May? Yeah, back in May, I was like, wow, this is fucking fantastic. This song. Wow, what an album we're gonna have. And so far, it's a great album. But things can change. I just hope we don't get any songs like the day of again. Ooh, very nice. I do love the building concept. It's the lyrics are great. Really good. the music video, or the lyric video, whatever, so cool.
I love this part. How it just gets absolutely crazy. Oh, heavy. My cool face work. Oh. Production on this album. Because of a million loves. With the perfume of the timeless, last size on a deathbed. Damn. Deep lyrics. Amazing song. This was the perfect single to drop after a four year hiatus for, for Nightwish. And well, what can I say? I love the orchestral elements, the chaggy riffs, that instrumental part was absolutely insane. And four ounces vocals were fantastic. So much emotion conveyed. But yeah, the, the song explores the interconnectedness of humanity and the legacy of those who came before us. It depicts life as a mosaic of broken, fragile pieces emphasizing that each individual's experience contribute to a greater whole. The refrain, we are their air, dust on their palm, highlights our inheritance of history and love. It reflects on the range of human experiences from the mundane to the epic and contemplates mortality through the notion of a curious ghost. It is a poignant meditation on existence, celebrating the enduring connections that bind us to our ancestors and one another sending embers to the stars, sending embers to the stars, saying hello to our ancestors, carrying our legacy. Very positive message by Nightwish, where the day of was completely fucking opposite. All right, let's continue to with the song Sway. Ooh, I love the guitar. Nice. Child of mankind, of yester wine, sway away the world in us. A grateful soul never needed much, emanate the heavens through your touch. Mm. Sway over the mountain tops or over the swaying crops, adorn your garden with a perfect day. Sway over the discontent, go stories in a tent, your house lands on the wind, see yourself. It has 
has begun to snow again. Mm, very and nice slow ballad by Nightwish. I really like this. The birds have flown, the birds have flown, where you rest your worn out. Mm, about self discovery, healing, and connection to nature. Already I can tell what this is about. Beautiful. Discontent go stories in a tent Your house lands on the wind See yourself Ooh. Ooh, love the piano mm. It's a nice break between the heaviness For sure, with Sway Violin? Ooh. Epic sounding. Mm, so relaxing. We are officially halfway through this reaction, by the way, guys. This song makes you question your existence. Why am I here? Love the folkier elements on this. It's like classic Nightwish. Got a sort of Celtic vibe now. The melodies. So, pretty emotionally charged, driven song by Flo Janssen and Marco Nightwish. As a whole, it's fantastic. I just love the epicness, the epicness, epicness of the song as well, especially that ending. Mm, really good lyrics as well. It's like I said before, the song explores themes of self-discovery, healing, and connection to nature Encourage, encourages the child of mankind to really sorrow and embrace gratitude using imagery of soaring over mountains and flourishing gardens to evoke freedom and transformation. The contrast between healing stories and those that scar suggests a complex journey through life. And life is a complex journey. The repeated phrase, the big reveal waits us all, signifies anticipation for personal growth. It invites your celebration of life and self-reflection, urging you to find joy in your journey. So obviously, it's another pretty positive song by Nightwish. You can do whatever the fuck you want in your life. You only live life once. Life is not a rehearsal. Okay, guys, hope you are enjoying this reaction. We're now going to listen to the children of Utter. Let's continue. Okay. Excuse me? Ooh. 
synths? Ooh, I like it. Nightwish? <laughs> what is... What's that? It's like a dancing song. Guitar this time. I like it. Building up the momentum. Very nice. got a nice groove to it. Those drums! Woohoo! Punchy as fuck! This song is completely changed from the beginning. Then the reductions off the hook. I love this song. Resilient survival. That riff, man. Oh. Symphonic elements, just building. Her vocals are amazing. Oh yes, yes. I didn't think I was gonna enjoy the children of Ada, especially the introduction. But holy shit, that song is a banger. Wow. Oh my god. I love it. 
That is a great song. Mm. Oh, how eerie is it as well, the ending. I fucking love that song. The introduction was really weird though. It felt, felt quite dancey at the beginning and then all of a sudden it became quite dark and heavy. Love the chorus. Love Floor's vocals on this. So angelic. Her vocals are amazing. That guitar riff by Ampudo. Oh. Oh. The production just highlighted the guitar work on this. And the drumming. The drum tone. The drums on this album are absolutely fantastic. They're punchy as anything. It's like 8D audio, especially listening to on headphones, but the children art are incredible. So like I said though, it reflects themes of resilience, survival and connection to heritage. It begins with a sense of isolating, depicting a vast and mocking landscape where people cast away from the world despite solitude and suffering. The actual, in the lyrics it underscores the determination to return and share their story. The repeated assertion that we are the ones to tell you why emphasizes the importance of their experience and their hope for survival. The imagery of lighting a fire and the mention of campsite Gaia suggests a communal spirit and a nurturing of life. The children of Atta, to me, highlights a deep connection to their roots and identity. The piece ultimately conveys a, a message of hope and unity as they strive to live meaningfully and support one another yearning to help others find their way back home amidst challenges. So overall, might be talking about mankind here, us. So now we um, settle on to something whispered followed me. This is gonna be interesting. All right, let's bring up the lyrics. Ooh, already got a very minor melody, dark melody. Love the Doomy Lady guitars on this. The keyboards make it sort of like a 70s vibe as well. Hucking in the 70s.
guitar evil melody. Love it. I can see why I, to me, I think um, a lot of people aren't going to like this song because it's a it's a lot slower song um, than the others per se. You could say like I feel like oh people are going to say it's too slow, but I love doom. I love doom metal, and I just love the doomy letting guitars on this song. Her vocals are absolutely fantastic. She coast she showcases her vocal delivery exceptional on this. She uses those high falsettos with the soprano vocals throughout the ending, which is amazing. The ending was fantastic. I love this song from start to finish. The orchestral elements as well. And the evil fucking melodies you're getting. Um, that you hear something from out of like symphonic black metal. But I love it. I love it. Something whispered follow me. It's fantastic. Yeah, so again, the song explores self-discovery, connection to nature, and the journey of life. It begins with a sense of wonder and possibility depicting depicting an untouched world rich with ancient secrets the song conveys a message of embracing adventure and seeking meaning in life encouraging the pursuit of what is real and significant amidst the complexities of existence something whispered the repetition of that reinforces the idea of intuitive guidance okay so we are very close very close to Finishing this album, next up is Spider Silk. Let's continue. Ooh, that piano. This is a very dark sounding Nightwish album. Very dark. Oh. Love that. Mm. You waved here in the moonlight hour. 
flowers did you create or did you wait and try the other way fly sucking them dry whoa God damn, I wish you did those whispers then. Something big's gonna happen here. This is going to be the song that's going to grow on me, I feel. At the moment, it's okay. It's okay. It's good. It's a good song. I feel like it's a little bit repetitive, but it's a good song. Probably by the third or fourth time I listen to it, I'm going to love it. That sounds like something out of Imaginarium. What's it called? Slowly, slowly. That's a fucking album as well. Beautiful. That's a very nice conclusion.
yeah, it's definitely going to grow on me, I feel. But at this, at this, uh, this song is okay, in my opinion. It's got interesting lyrics as well. But yeah, um, I do love, uh, Tro Tro I think it's Troy's addition to, to the vocals as well. They, she, he harmonizes so well with Floor Janssen. Floor Janssen's vocals are absolutely fantastic on this. Um, again, some really dark melodies on this song as well. And there is some, I feel like they've added a bit of the melody from Imaginarium to this as well, especially in the conclusion. But overall, Spider Silk, pretty, it's a good song. I wouldn't say it's the best song off the album, but it's okay. Um, so, reading the lyrics, looks like it's um, explore themes of creation, transformation, the cycle of life and death through the metaphor of a spider weaving its webs. The repetition of spin away emphasizes the ongoing cycle weaving and reweaving, reinforcing the idea of continual transformation. It's a complex piece, that's for sure, lyrically. Um, and it also questions your existence. Okay, so let's... Um, Spider Silk is okay, but let's uh, now listen to Higher Ref. guitar Something out of Opa for school. Is this Marco? Very dark melodies on this album. Oh, 
it's got the old classic Nightwish sound, the melody. That picked up. That really picked up. Interesting, very beautiful song. Interesting song as overall. Mm. Okay, so pause it here. Um, I'm kind of torn between this song. I really I enjoyed it, and I didn't like it at first, but. It turned out to be pretty good. I just love how it picked up, didn't it? I thought it was going to be like a soft and somber slow song throughout most of the six minutes, but holy shit, in the middle part, it really picked up with those crashing guitars and the drums were absolutely fantastic. Well, Janssen's vocals are absolutely fantastic and jelly, conveying a lot of emotion along with Marco's vocals as well, harmonizing very well with Floor Janssen. Marco's vocals are exceptional on this. I don't know if it's Marco or Troy because they do sound quite similar. But yeah, really enjoyed this. Um, so reading the lyrics, uh, yeah, reading. I'm looking at it, and I feel like it's uh, nostalgia, longing, and the search for belonging with a natural setting. It begins with an invitation to step into a serene tree-filled landscape, encouraging self-expression and movement. The repeated motive of never-ending longing highlights a deep yearning for the past, specific specifically for lost opportunities. Like, what if I did that? And a former sense of home imagery of watering the dead field symbolizes the struggle to nurture memories and cope with loss, suggesting that living with pain can overshadow happiness. The mention of a beast and bleeding birds evokes a sense of unease and desire to find one's place in the world. It's a very good song lyrically. The past is both cherished and painful. It emphasizes the complexities of love, memory, and identity. Okay, so we're gonna check out the weave now. Oh, again with those dark melodies on here. Damn! Oh, swag. Okay. Oh, that bass. Dirty, grimy face. Oh, love it.
very theatrical. Damn, that hit hard. Slaps us. Oh, this sounds so good. Trick me, Nightwish. You tricked me. Dirty face, I love it. like someone's hit me with a frying pan straight into the face well okay so what can i say this is one of the best songs off the album in my opinion absolutely love the transitions and how slow it starts off and then it picks up and whoa you get hit by a wall of sound with those crushing riffs that awesome piano work, the orchestral elements, very theatrical, cinematic, and vocals note on the last 30 seconds. Holy shit. Absolutely amazing. So it's a, it's a fairly simple process. It's obviously looking at the birth transformation, the sick, cyclical nature of life and death. It begins with the imagery of a first cry, symbolizing new beginnings and a connection to ancestral spirits. As life progresses, represented by milestones such as the first step and the tenth spring, the song reflects on growth, innocence, and youthful passion. The refrain about the unweaving has begun introduces a theme of disintegration, suggesting that as one grows, there is a necessary breaking down of former states. This process, while painfully, leads to a deeper understanding of existence. So that's what I was getting at. It's like, when you grow older, you start to discover more things. And it's basically, again, about life and death. 
Okay, so it's been a very fun journey to listen to Nightwish Yesterwine, but unfortunately, this is the last song, and um, I'm absolutely buggered. This album reaction takes a lot of energy out of you, but I feel like doing reactions, you can really, really listen to the music and just absorb what they are telling you. But we're listening to Lantern Light. This is the last song off the album. We're not checking the instrumentals. Um, no, we're not doing that. We're just checking the 12 songs and this is the last song. Let's continue. Gone is the hurt away. Gone is the warmth of day. Oh, her vocals, her vibrato as well. Saved happy memories and great Oh, into a velvety light Beneath a lantern light mm. Last night brought the heaviest of snow that piano in the background and the keyboards the violin as well beautiful Quite a very long Nightwish album. It's going to be a very long video. It's interesting how they're ending off with such a very slow song for the album. I'm the way shaping pebbles roll as jets. I am the snow on your palm. I am the secret Epic, cinematic. A lot of emotion. It's 
pretty heavy song though. Like the meaning of it. I don't know, I feel like the weave should have ended off the album. Would have been a more energetic way to end off the album. But Lantern Light's a, a good song. I walk now toward the trees. The night falling at my feet into the forest of yesterday. Mr. Wand. That's the end of time. Alright, so that was Nightwish and the album Yester Wine. And what can I say about first initial impressions? It was very good album. But let's talk about the Lantern Light. Lantern Light was a fan it was an interesting way to end off the album. I wouldn't say it was a fantastic way. I feel like the weave should have ended off the album, had more energy and she uses her fal falsetto incredibly well. Lantern Light. Very emotional song, captures like themes of, captures themes of healing, transformation, and the passage of time, of course, set against backdrop of nature and memory. It begins with a sense of release as the pain and warmth of the day fade away, replaced by the tranquility of a velvety night, illuminated by a lantern light. The imagery of uh, snow melting suggests a cleansing of past memories, allowing for new beginnings. It's what it's all about. It's about new beginnings. Their connection to the natural world, identifying as various elements, waves, snow and streams, symbolizing a fluidity and transformation. There is a sense of unity with the universe and a recognition of shared experiences. The lyrics prepare you to move forward. They, they, the Nightwish express a longing for connection, hinting at a relationship that transcends time and space. The mention of waiting for you suggests hope for reunion, while the journey of the forest of Yesterwine evokes nostalgia for the past. The, the song conveys a message of renewal and the beauty of memories while embracing the inevitability of change and promise of new tomorrows interesting way to end off the album i'm not disagreeing how it should end off the album maybe the weave should have ended off the album but that's just my pet hate on this album overall it's a very good album the children of Ada was a fantastic song along with perfume of the timeless looking the antikythera mechanism was an incredible song you got some interesting songs like something whispered followed me the really cinematic song of the weave it was good it was a good album so I'm thinking it's gonna take me a while to uh, um, if you want to see my full album review for Nightwish Yesterday make sure you check out Discovery in a few days I'll give you my thoughts of what I actually thought about the album after my first five or six listens of Nightwish Yesterday Overall, I hope you did enjoy this album reaction. At the moment, I'm going to give it a 70 to 75% leading on towards 80%. So maybe 70 to 80%. Um, 7 out of 10, 8, 10 out, of, 8 out of 10. But there are some um, issues with this album, in my opinion. I feel like the track listing at times is a little bit wrong. And you got unnecessary, song, unnecessary songs like The Day Of, which is an okay song, you could say, but... Um, I think the day off was the only weaker song off the album, in my opinion. 
Spider Silk was okay as well, I suppose, but the rest of the songs were pretty hard hitting and quite energetic, apart from Lantern Light, which was which was more of a ballad. But yeah, unexpected, different sound by Nightwish, that's for sure. They definitely have changed their sound a little bit on this. But yeah, let me know what you thought, and I will see you in the next one.